welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. Hey, hello, my duckies. I'm Quick J Horsethroat, and in 2014, I played a lot of games. Some good, some bad. But today, for the first time ever, I thought I'd give all of you my top ten top. Fuck, I did that wrong. Top ten favorite games of 2014. Now, some of the games you're going to be seeing in this list have been covered by myself. Others have been covered by my good friend Cat Icarus, and others I've never mentioned on this channel whatsoever. But rest assured, I have played them all. Now, my only rule for this list is not to include remasters, unfortunately. So stuff like The Last of Us Remastered or Metro Redux. Basically, stuff uh, that are based on games and they've just updated the visuals and the music and added a few new features. Other than that, the gameplay is exactly the same and everything else about the game is exactly the same. Games like that, I ain't counting. Anyway, with that being said, let's begin. Cure. <gasps> This was a game that I really wanted to talk about, but I ran out of time during the year. Rest assured, though, Strider is a hardcore game in every sense of the word from the second it starts. You begin cutting your way through gun-wielding Russians with the fastest sword combat imaginable, and in a fantastic Metroidvania style, you explore a dystopian cyber world, gather upgrades, unlock doors, and quickly dispatch enemies with tight platforming and speed-defying flowing combat. Overall, this game is a great time until it ends, and with an energetic soundtrack, incredible neon visuals, and a badass protagonist with a stupid name, Strider makes it at number 10. <gasps> Oh, but Caddy, why is Far Cry 4 so high on your list? It's clearly the best game ever. Well, the visuals, music, and gameplay in Far Cry 4 are fantastic, with one of the most beautiful and organic open worlds I've ever seen. Tons of varied and rewarding side quests, vehicles are plenty, guns and upgrades are plenty, and an extremely fun and entertaining main quest with multiple ways to play. However, I didn't find the story engaging enough in this game to make it past number nine. With a bland main character interacting with many interesting side characters, and of course the memorably insane and charismatically badass pagan men, it felt very imbalanced and boring for me in some of the game's longer cutscenes. But hey, the rest of the game is completely awesome. That's why it's in the top ten, and you can ride elephants. Trust me, it's amazing. <gasps> Out of every horror game this year, PT is the one that scared me the most, and it's fucking free on PS4. PT may be just a demo, it may not be very long, and it may be overly cryptic when it doesn't really need to be, but for a game that gives you the ability to walk around, zoom into things, and nothing else, this game's atmosphere, psychological mind screwing, and optional completely missable scares provide tons of replay value and new frights every single time you loop around those horrific corridors. Not to mention, it looks amazing and the sound design is impeccable. I've already done a video about this game, so I won't talk about it anymore, but rest assured, if you have a PS4, download this beast right now and see what you can find, and prepare to be scared. <gasps> Is it just me, or did nobody talk about this game when it was released? Ever? Well, I'll do it right now. To put it shortly, this is my favorite Kirby game I've ever played, and a damn fine portable game to boot. Kirby's control is fantastic, the visuals and 3D are brilliant, the music is catchy as fuck, the secrets are wonderfully hidden, adding lovely layers of difficulty in every level if you find it too easy, and like always, the absorbing power-ups add tons of new methods to beat in the game itself, and general gameplay stars in every stage overall, making replays for secrets and the entirety of the adventure feel fresh and exciting every single time, no matter what environment you're in. Not to mention, this game is called Triple Deluxe, meaning three games in one. Sure, the other two games are really short, but fighting is awesome and the rhythm game is very challenging but fun. I also adore the boss battles and this game is adorable. And it's Kirby. I mean, I mean, you can't go wrong with Kirby, can you? <gasps> as far as I'm concerned, this is the best Mario Kart game on the market, which is strange because it's fundamentally the same thing as all the other games. What makes this one special, though, is the large amount of tracks, larger amount of characters, more customizable parts for cars, more racing styles, more things to unlock, the most incredible visuals to ever grace a kart racer at 60 frames per second, and the awesome inclusion of multiple Nintendo universes to race through and play as in the form of DLC. My friends and I have sunk many hours into Mario Kart 8, and the only reason it isn't higher on the list is because battle mode isn't very good. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. The rest is excellent. I haven't had this much fun in the Mario Kart game since Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube. This, the, and seriously, just look at the game, it's fucking beautiful! <gasps> Alien Isolation on reflection actually made me realize I enjoyed it even more than when I initially played it. You've probably heard it all before, but it's true. This game, not only as a part of the Alien franchise, but as a video game in itself, is an extremely effective survival horror experience. The attention to detail and love towards the original movie is jaw dropping. The sound design makes the faintest of footsteps scary. The visuals are incredibly crafted, and the Alien itself features some of the smartest, fastest, and deadliest AI to grace survival horror. To top it off, it's a long as hell game with an incredible final act, and it's one of the few survival horror games out there that rewards experimentation, and every single time you die, you play the game in an entirely different way. Also, the DLC, where short, kicks too much ass to not mention. <gasps> I'm not a diehard Smash Brothers fan at all. Well, at least not to the point of paying $60 for a demo to a full game being released seven days later on the 3DS. I really don't get that! But Smash Wii U is an excellently crafted game indeed. Not only has this game provided me with hours of multiplayer epicness, but it's also given me more of the single player epicness with thousands of challenges, missions, and rewarding unlockables. Of course, being Nintendo, the visuals, music, simple for casuals, yet deep for professionals, gameplay, an incredible amount of content is all here and accounted for. But the sheer volume of customizable aspects to this game on every level makes this the best Smash game to date, bar none. And like Mario Kart 8, despite fundamentally being the same thing, this game packs so much of a wallet that it almost gives me no reason at all to pick up the previous entries. It, it fucking rocks. <gasps> ah, Shovel Knight. Tons of YouTubers have gushed about this game, including me. So because of that, I won't say too much about it. But what I will say is that in this game, the presentation is marvellous, including some of the greatest music I've ever heard in a 2D platformer, the control is drop-dead perfect, and the level design is what sets this game apart from the rest, throwing new challenges, enemies, explorative secrets, and obstacles at you with the greatest difficulty increments and utmost grace as possible. Every sprite and object you see on screen is there for a reason, whether it be for secrets or challenges, and any and all mistakes are all down to you and you alone. The boss battles as well are all memorable, extremely well thought out, and badass. In fact, this whole game is badass. If you, 
if you haven't got this game yet, I don't know why you haven't got it yet. <gasps> Oh, but Katie, you said that no remasters were right out. Yeah, well, this game isn't a remaster, and anyone that tells you otherwise is outright wrong. Just add water and old world inhabitants didn't simply take Abe's Odyssey, gloss it up for next gen, and then add a few new features. New and Tasty instead takes the familiar story, familiar structure, and few familiar level designs, and that's literally it. Everything else is different. This is an entirely new, different game entirely. The visual style, graphic quality, gameplay, faster paced puzzles, more difficult challenges thrown all over the place, more secret areas, more ducks to save with different ways to save them, longer levels with more environments to catch out even the most dedicated players. Oh, I mean, Christ. Basically, this game does so much new and different from the game it's originally based on that it ends up becoming its own unique classic for the modern day in the same way that Abe's Odyssey was a classic back in the 90s. The amount of love and passion put into this complete and utter rebuild up from scratch game is literally oozing out of every corner and even if you've never played an odd world game before I can't recommend it enough. And hey if you love obscure dark atmospheric puzzle platformers then you should already own this. Not to mention the fact that Oddworld and Just Add Water allowed fans to name the trophies of the game and voice the Mudokans themselves in the game proves how awesome, engaging and grateful the two companies are to their fans. Which is not only apparent if you should ever meet these guys but it's also visible in the way that the game has made itself. <gasps> If you saw my review of this, then you probably saw this coming. Bayonetta 2 is not only my favourite hack and slash game ever made, but it's also in my top 10 favourite video games ever in general ever made ever. Not only does Bayonetta 2 improve and iron out everything with the original game to make it stand out as a perfect sequel, but it also adds in and expands everything from the original that weren't even glanced over to make it a simply near perfect hack and slash experience. There is more of everything from the first game, from power ups, magic attacks, secrets, and combos that I won't even bother listing them all. The narrative, where slightly silly, is much more personal and intriguing. The jokes and humour are sharper and overall funnier. The shops and item system is more balanced, and the gameplay is so goddamn polished that I can't even possibly see where a Bayonetta 3 could go. Also, for fuck's sake, the PS4 is the most powerful home console to date, and yet the Wii U churns this puppy out at 60 frames per second, 1080p flawlessly. That is care. That is pushing the console to its limits. That is what makes consumers want to buy your console in the first place. And that is a boss battle. Isn't it fucking crazy? They're all like that. Bayonetta 2 was the main reason I picked up a Wii U, and holy shit, I'm glad I did. I love this game, and I love it. <laughs> And there you have it everyone, my top 10 personal favourite games of 2014. Now please, leave all of your comments and all of your thoughts and all of your personal top 10 favourite games of 2014 because this was only my list after all. And I'll be seeing you all very shortly. Have an amazing 2015 everyone, hope you had a good holidays, hope you had a good New Year's, hope you had a good life, and I'll be seeing you soon. Ta-ra! Hello there everybody and thanks so much for watching my top 10 favourite games of 2014 in the current quickies format. I hope that went well. Um, if you enjoyed this video then please consider subscribing to my channel because there's a video every single Sunday and um, it also helps me out a huge amount on YouTube to get noticed and everything. You have no idea how handy it is and I'll be incredibly grateful if you did. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. As always check the description for my social media links and all of that good stuff so you can follow what I do on a day to day basis and um, I'm going to take this time to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to my top Patreon supporters. So, um, and you can find that in the description as well. So, um, you guys, thank you so much. Um, Nicole Gunara, Ahmed Al Mutua, Tony Pierce, Mohamed Al Sali, Alan Angert, Salah Tell, Greg Black, Benjamin Peasley, Brad Bird, Carl Hackinen, Travis McCollum, and Ferocious Toaster. Awesome, um, awesome username there. And, um, so yeah, thank every single one of you people that I just mentioned, and thank everyone at home for watching this video. And if it's your birthday today or watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful.